We go about our daily lives aware that several satellites circle our planet each day and support us in a variety of ways. Hello and welcome to Z. Stay with us to know how satellites work and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. The fact that there are approximately 4,900 satellites orbiting the Earth could surprise you. The first thing that comes to mind is, why are these satellites in orbits that are so different from one another? How is the satellite able to do all of its tasks? And what are the internal elements that enable them to complete all of the responsibilities assigned to them? Let's take a closer look at each of these solutions. It is well knowledge that a satellite maintains its orbit due to a delicate balance between the forces of gravity and centrifugal force. The equation for the force balance, which balances the gravitational and centrifugal forces, determines the angular velocity of the satellite. The satellite is given enough speed during deployment to balance these two forces. A satellite that is close to Earth needs to move faster than one that is farther away in order to withstand the gravitational pull. Satellites never lose speed because there is so little resistance in orbit. This implies that satellites will keep orbiting the Earth without the need for an external energy source. Low Earth Orbit, Medium Earth Orbit, or Geosynchronous Earth Orbit are the three orbital types for satellites. Here is an illustration of these three orbits. Later, we'll go into greater detail about them. The Van Allen Belt is a fascinating location in outer space. A zone containing a lot of extremely intense charged particles that might badly harm a satellite's electronics. In general, it is advised against leaving satellites parked in the Van Allen Belt. The satellite's intended use and application must be considered while deciding what orbit to place it in. An orbit that is closer to the planet is chosen if the satellite is designed for Earth observation, weather forecasts, geographic area surveying, satellite phone calls, etc. With an altitude between 160 to 2,000 kilometers and an orbital period of around 1.5 hours, LEO is the closest to the Earth. However, because these satellites only cover a small portion of the planet, many satellites are needed to provide worldwide coverage. For this reason, a high orbit like GEO is chosen while broadcasting. At a height of 35,786 kilometers and rotating at the same rate as the Earth, satellites in geosynchronous orbit. In other words, one rotation of the satellite takes exactly 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. A unique type of orbit within the geosynchronous orbit known as the geostationary orbit is centered on the equator of the Earth. These satellites don't move in relation to the Earth because you no longer need to constantly alter the angle of your satellite dish. Geostationary satellites are the best option for television broadcasts. This is the reason the geostationary belt, which is overseen by the ITU international body, is so densely populated with satellites. A few navigation satellites also reside in geosynchronous orbits. Three satellites are adequate to cover the entire planet because GEO satellites can cover one-third of the planet's area. MEO is a great choice for apps that use navigation, like GPS. Despite being in the LEO orbit, which is closest to the planet, satellites in this orbit rotate quite quickly. Receivers on Earth are unable to perform the navigation computations correctly as a result. GPS satellites use MEO because LEO requires a lot more satellites to completely cover the Earth. 24 satellites can typically cover the entire planet in a 12-hour orbit in a typical GPS system. Let's now examine the major elements and their roles in a communication satellite. The transponders are the brains of communication satellites. A transponder's primary job is to alter the frequency of the received signal, eliminate signal noise, and boost the signal power. Transponders on KU band satellites can have 20 or more transponders and the transponder transforms from 14 GHz to 12 GHz. Transponders need a lot of electrical power to do all of these tasks, as is clear. 
A satellite can use batteries or solar panels to power itself. The electronic devices are powered by solar panels, however when there is an eclipse, batteries are used. A sun sensor is visible on the satellite. This sun sensor aids in positioning the solar panels so that the most energy from the sun can be captured. Let's now examine how the transponder receives the antenna's input signal. Reflector antenna are the most prevalent type of satellite antenna. A satellite should travel along its plan, smooth orbit. Due to the uneven mass distribution of the Earth, as well as the existence of the moon and sun, the gravitational field around the satellite is not uniform. As a result, the satellite occasionally deviates from the intended orbital position. This is a risky condition since it will result in a total signal loss. The usage of thrusters by satellites helps them avoid such a scenario. The satellite is maintained in the proper position by the firing of the thrusters. These aid spacecraft in avoiding space debris. Tanks in the satellite body store the fuel required for the thrusters. And ground station continuously monitors the satellite's position and controls the thrusters. The Earth station not only manages location, but also keeps an eye on the speed and health of the satellites. Control, telemetry, and tracking technologies are used to accomplish this. The systems maintain communication between Earth and the satellite by sending a signal to the Earth station continuously. These signals are typically transmitted at several frequencies to set them apart from other communication signals. Have you ever wondered what happens to a satellite when it is no longer useful or is getting close to the end of its useful life? These satellites may endanger other spacecraft or satellites that are currently in use. By turning on the thrusters, dormant satellites are moved to the graveyard orbit to handle this scenario. We will be able to move the satellite to an orbit with a larger radius simply by speeding up its spin. This animation explains how this process works. A few hundred kilometers above the geostationary orbit is the cemetery orbit. The thrusters use as much fuel for this activity as a satellite would for nearly three months of station holding. We have so far just talked about communication satellites. A GPS satellite's antenna and atomic clock are its two most vital parts. Here is also an illustration of the L-band navigation antennas that are utilized in these kinds of spacecraft. Depending on their role, Earth observation satellites, which are mostly in low Earth orbit, LEO, carry different types of sensors, imagers, etc. Here are some intriguing details. You may have noticed that the satellites in this film were wrapped in foil that was gold in hue. Why is this foil being used? In actuality, it is not foil as it first appears to be. It has a multi-layered structure, as can be seen if you cut it into a cross-section. In orbit, where the temperature ranges from minus 150 to 200 degrees Celsius, satellites must contend with extreme temperature changes. Additionally, the sun's intense solar radiation is a problem for satellites. This substance actually serves as a shield, shielding the satellite's internal parts from intense temperature changes and solar radiation. We trust that this video has given you a solid understanding of the many kinds of satellites and how they operate. Thank you for watching. Please click the subscribe button to support our educational service.